This session is to commemorate uh, the contributions that Norm Zinner, who died earlier this year, had made to not only the society but to neurodynamics, the understanding of incontinence, and many other contributions in neurology. Now, before we actually get started, Ralph would like to say a few words, so I invite Ralph to come up now to, to speak. This is Ralph Zinner. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, this is um, kind of you to uh, take this uh, last minute um, suggestion that I uh, say a few words. Um, and um, just in this meeting so far, uh, the many warm uh, remembrances uh, uh, make real for me how important uh, he uh, was and how the society was for him. So uh, I would like to say on behalf of Nancy, his wife, and my stepmom, who is here, and my three siblings, Sam, Marilyn, and John, and my wife, Jerry, who's here, who was just introduced. Um, and I'd like to thank the program chairs for this uh, debate in honor of my dad today. Uh, my dad was the kind of guy who did things. Uh, in high school, he got the award for the boy who did most. Um, and uh, he started bands, newspapers, wrestling. He was on the football team, Red Cross, the student body vice president. He worked as the fastest short order cook at a, uh, at a hotel in the uh, Catskills. All these things he did uh, were about encouraging people towards doing something useful and fun um, together. It was never simply what you thought, but uh, what you did with your thoughts. Perhaps uh, urology was destiny for him. Uh, when in medical school, as part of a research project, he had to eat an exact quantity of calories, and he had to be of urine specimens. It was necessary that he collected all output of daily urine over a year. He, he felt a strong sense that he had to do this perfectly. And he somehow successfully dealt with the urine specimens on his dates. <laughs> so he ultimately chose urology. Early in his career, he worked with Rod Ritter and Art Sterling to look at the shapes of droplets so he could predict uh, urinary uh, um, diseases. At age four, I was made a colleague. I peed into a machine outfitted with a stroboscope. And data from my urine stream was part of a publication. Around this very same time, I watched the lecture on a local public television channel in Seattle. It opened with a flushing toilet, the only part of the lecture I was able to understand. But such things make an impression on the kid. This was something beyond his teaching me to bike, to tie my shoes, or stand on my head. I learned it to be part of a changing the world, and it could be more than very much needed. It could be fun. I got into medical research myself, and when I work on, uh, with others uh, and with energy, I think of my dad. He took an active interest in my work, which has been both a real use to me and a shot in the arm. So I've come on to understand uh, an understanding of the fun in the wonderment and the fun in doing of such things. And the doing of it is amplified in working with others in a team. And so he and colleagues formed uh, the first meet, uh, International Continents Society meetings that grew into the magnificent meeting and conference here in Beijing today. I remember the awe I felt at the crowds. They were many, but much smaller then at the joint uh, ICS and your Dynamic Society uh, meeting in uh, LA in 1980 that he chaired, it is through a group effort of interacting talented and committed people that we will solve the problems that afflict so many today. This meeting is a living testament to his spirit. I feel deeply privileged to be here today. I would like to end by saying that the idea of a debate is a perfect way to honor him. He loved to debate, not to impose his views. It's a process of trading ideas in a good-natured way to solidify existing thoughts and get towards fresh perspective. So let's work together to solve some problems. Let the debates begin. Thank you.